Good morning, everyone. It's Anifa Menon from HeartHealthBrainHealth.com, encouraging healthy grieving and mindful actions. Now, today I wanted to talk a little bit about humor and laughter because I mentioned that I would talk about this uh, a few videos ago. And it's about time. It's the beginning of this new year. And I think it's time to talk about humor and its place in our life. So I came across this quotation which says, nothing is better than the unintended humor in reality. Actually, it says, nothing is better than the unintended humor of reality. <laughs> so both the same. So unfortunately, I don't have any um, reference for you as to who wrote that quote, but I loved it. And it's true, right? It's if we look at the things that are really amusing, and I think you might find this if you look at your own life or life in general, and it might be the reason that we like shows like Seinfeld, uh, people like shows like um, Friends. I think uh, I liked things like Cheers. I liked uh, Bob Newhart before that. There's so many fun shows that people have watched, and I'm definitely not a TV person, but I do remember humor. And certainly in day-to-day -day experiences, I love looking at humor and, and using it and, and appreciating it for my life and the life of people around me. So I was thinking today of how I would share this with you, and I thought I'd share a story with you that might resonate with some of you. So I myself am not great in terms of navigating roads. So this is actually known pretty well amongst my friend circle, yet, and I know it too. Now, for the longest time, I have been really... Uh, not happy with myself or not really knowing roads of especially places that I'm very familiar with. Now I can walk the exact same route every day and remember that. But if I'm going to places that I've been to before and I'm going through to get to again, it might not be so easy for me to remember how to get there again. And so I thought today I would remember there was a, a friend that uh, I went to a particular location with which is actually a very familiar location for me. I've been there many, many times and I get there on my own and he was driving us to this location. And I looked around and I thought, wow, you must be getting here by a different way because the only road I know to get here is through Trafalgar and Trafalgar is a very common road in Oakville. And so I was talking about this and he looked at me and he said, as he was driving, um, we are on Trafalgar. And I kept going and saying, you know, it must be because you've lived here longer that you actually know this location very well and you know different ways to get places that I would just take a very basic way of getting to. And he said, we're on Trafalgar. And I said, so I kept on going with, uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess I should get to know some different routes too. So this will give me a different idea. So exactly where are we? <laughs> he looked at me and he said, we're on Trafalgar. <laughs> So finally set in to me that we were on Trafalgar and I have to tell you, I couldn't stop laughing. I couldn't stop laughing and he looked over at me seriously thinking, what am I laughing about? And I was laughing about the fact that we were on Trafalgar and laughing in appreciation of how calm he was through the three times that he told me. He was so calmly expressing and I think that came from some awareness of my not such great feelings about my awareness of roads that he wanted to make sure that I didn't feel not so good about not knowing that we were on Trafalgar. I loved that. I loved that experience. But anyways, I thought it was hilarious. I loved it. There was another experience that I had with someone that I went for a walk with and we went just through a path. It was a trail in a forest that's very close to my home. And I go through this area regularly and I notice myself that if I don't take the exact same route, I can get lost. It's got a lot of trails in this forest. And for me, again, navigation, <laughs> I know that I can get lost if I'm not going exactly the, the direction or the route that I'm used to. And so we went a, a route that he was familiar with. And at the time that we went for a walk, he had a very sore back and had had a sore back for quite a bit of time, like really not comfortable, like really almost not movable at some point, so he was not so movable. So we're walking and we get to a particular spot and he says, my back's really sore, I, I need to stop. So I said, okay, um, are you okay? And it looked pretty serious. Again, this friend had just started getting out for walks again regularly and this was a short walk we were taking, but he was really not comfortable. And then I got concerned because 
what if he shouldn't walk anymore? What if he can't walk anymore for the rest of the walk that was intended? And we were about the same distance away from where we were heading back to. So whatever length of time we had walked for, we were needing to walk that much time back to get back. And I thought, I wonder what I should do. So out of care and concern, I said, do you want me to leave you here and come back to get you? And what I meant, of course, and I'm sure he understood too, was to get someone to help because maybe he needed to be lifted out of there, right? And I wouldn't be able to lift him or give him a hand that way. And so I offered this. Now, this is a person who actually knows very much about my uh, direction, <laughs> opportunities, challenges. And when I said it to him, I remember him looking at me saying, hmm, I don't know. And I said, I don't even know how I'd get back to you because I'd have to leave a trail for myself. Would I leave rocks? Because rocks were around now. Of course, they're not colored rocks, so I'm not going to be able to find rocks in a forest. I thought about sticks. Would I do that? I leave a trail of bird seeds. <laughs> I just couldn't think of what I could possibly leave that would help me find him again. And he looked at me and he said, please don't leave me. <laughs> Half choking and pretty serious because <laughs> we both knew that it might not be so easy for me to find him again. And I loved that too, because even in that, please don't leave me, it was humor filled. And I love that we could laugh over that situation. And so today I want to remind you that our day-to-day -day experiences have so much humor in them. And then how we take them has humor in it too. Like it's such an enjoyable experience to share with someone who understands you or who you understand and to be able to share laughter and humor. And it's happening all the time. I know that I look for opportunities to smile or laugh all the time. And I think that many people forget about this. Many people forget that this is such a handy tool. It's such a feeling good of a moment or look today it's months after both of those experiences and yet I can think about them and laugh and I love that there is such value to that and it raises our vibration so humor and happiness and joy are all part of higher vibrations so today I wanted to end this video with reminding you about this and Mark Twain has a, a quotation that I like which says humor is mankind's greatest blessing Humor is mankind's greatest blessing, and it really is. It's so portable. It's so attainable for all of us if we choose to think in that way. It's such a blessing, and I would love for you to sit for five minutes after this video and just think about what kind of things automatically bring a smile to your face, automatically make you laugh. I'm sure either someone's told you a great joke or some funny incident has happened Bring it back to your mind and feel it because that energy is going to lift so many energies in your body. I hope you have a fantastic day ahead. And remember, transform your mind and transform your life. Bye-bye, everyone.